All right, guys, so this video is going to cover a set of questions from an AQA A-Level Chem past paper, specifically paper one June 2017. The paper, mark scheme and examiner's report will be linked in the description below. But unfortunately, as always, I can't show the paper because of AQA copyright. So if you want to pause the video and check out the question and mark scheme yourself, feel free to do so. And if you want to see more question breakdowns like this, be sure to like, subscribe and all that good stuff. It really helps the channel grow. So let's jump into the question then and see what's going on here. So the ionic product of water is this value right here. And this is at 10 degrees Celsius. And then question 3.1, which of the following is the correct expression for KW? So starting off nice and easy, we've got a four choice, multiple choice question, A, B, C, and D. Okay, so pause the video, think to yourself, which one of these A to D is the correct expression? So I'm gonna give some theory here. If you're already really comfortable with this, feel free to skip ahead. But as with Ka, Kw, in reality, it's just a Kc expression. Okay, it's also to do with concentration. So if we think of the Kc expression as water, water is always going to dissociate like this, right? We're gonna have our water equilibrium arrow right here, and then we're gonna have our proton, our uh, H plus ion, and then our OH minus our hydroxide, okay? Now, if you think of Kc, Kc is always going to be the concentration of products divided by the concentration of reactants. So let's actually write that out right here. We're gonna have H plus concentration, OH minus concentration, all over H2O concentration, okay? This looks very similar to this guy right here, okay? However, what you have to keep in mind is that the theory behind Kw, we no longer want this, right? Let's change to a red here, cross this out. We don't want Kc, we're just using that to explain the theory. What we want is Kw, okay? Now, in water, the equilibrium lies incredibly strongly to the left, okay? It doesn't dissociate. So the concentration of H2O is so much greater than the concentration of its dissociated ions so we essentially think of this, the concentration of the water, actually as a constant, and you completely remove it from the expression. So this then just becomes our concentration of products. So it's gonna be H plus concentration, OH minus concentration, and we completely ignore the water concentration, okay? So our correct answer here is gonna be C, done. Okay, first mark out of the way, real easy question to get the juices flowing. Let's go on to question 3.2. So some more theory here, calculate the pH of pure water at 10 degrees Celsius and give our answer to two decimal places. pH for A-level chemistry, always remember two decimal places. That's always what they want to see it as. Okay, just keep that in mind. So we are concerned with pure water, okay? There's nothing else in the solution. It's simply H2O, there's nothing else present. So in this instance, all pure water is considered perfectly neutral. So going back to our cheeky H2O dissociation up here, what we can see then in pure water, because there's no other things present in the solution that are reacting with the water and changing our reactants and products, we assume that the concentration of H plus ions and the concentration of OH minus ions are in exactly equal. Okay, they're, one, they're perfectly one-to-one. -one. So what this means then, very similar to the Ka expression, um, when you do H plus squared, we do exactly the same thing here, okay? So what we're going to say then is, in this equation, our Kw expression is no longer this. We assume that they're co completely equal, so we can just do H plus squared, okay? Simple as that. Now, what we want to do here is because we don't really care about this, we want our pH. So we have to make this the subject and then you plug that into our pH expression of pH equals minus log H plus concentration and that will give us the answer, okay? So let's do that right here. So H plus, if we rearrange this and make this the subject, square root both sides, so square root of Kw, this is going to be square root of the value given in the question, 2.93 times 10 to the minus 15. Okay, so if you plug that in your calculator, you're gonna get an answer of 5.4129 times 10 to the minus eight, okay? Then, as I said, you wanna plug this into our pH expression, minus log, and then just answer. 
Obviously, when you write this out, try and write that out again. But if you plug this into this expression, you're going to get an answer of 7.267. And then if you put that to two DPs, as it asks for in the question, it's going to be 7.27. Okay. And that is our final answer, two marks. Okay. Okay, question 3.3 then. Suggest when this pure water at 10 degrees Celsius is not alkaline. Okay, so it's only a one mark question here. So we don't have an explain command words, just suggest, just get something on the page. And we've just calculated that the pH of our pure water at 10 degrees Celsius is 7.27. Okay, so even though this is slightly above seven, it would still be considered neutral. Okay, now it's said here, why is pure water not considered alkaline at 10 degrees Celsius? And the reason being that if we have our KW expression right here, and we've made the assumption that H plus concentration equals OH minus concentration, it has to be neutral. And the reason being that if for it to be alkaline or basic, the OH minus concentration has to be greater than the H plus concentration. That's just how it works, okay? So for our answer here, if you look at the Mars scheme, super simple response here. All you have to say is H plus concentration equals our OH minus concentration. So if they're the same, it's gonna be neutral. Because the H plus concentration is not greater, it's not acidic, and because the OH minus concentration isn't greater, it's not alkaline, okay? Simple as that. Hopefully that's an easy one marker for you guys to remember in case it pops up again. So I'll tick that off. All right, question 3.4, getting a bit more interesting here. We're doing some calculations. So calculate the pH of calcium hydroxide at 10 degrees Celsius with a concentration of 0.0131 moles per decimeter cubed. Your answer must be to two DPs. Again, pH always has to be to two DPs, okay? So you may look at this question and think, wow, this is so easy. All we have to do is use our KW expression, rearrange it to find H plus, plug that into your log expression. Happy days, right? Three easy marks. Really pay attention to this, guys, okay? Let me actually underline it right here. Calcium hydroxide. What's this guy right here? What group in the periodic table is calcium in? Group two, okay? Really important to remember, group two hydroxides are dibasic. Okay, and that's because all group two metals have a plus two charge. OH minuses have a one minus charge. So you require two of these guys for every one of these. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. So just remember that caveat in these group two, it can be magnesium hydroxide, it doesn't really matter. It's a group two hydroxide, just remember they, they are dibasic. Just like with sulfuric acid, it's diprotic. Okay, there's a slightly different deviation that we would make from typical questions. So let's get some information on the page from our previous question. KW expression is going to be H plus OH minus concentration. Okay, that's done. And our KW value from the previous question is 2.93 times 10 to the minus 15, and this is at 10 degrees C, okay? All right, so going back to what I said about it being dibasic, okay? So if we have a concentration of 0 0.031, so let's write this out, concentration of calcium hydroxide equals 0 0.0131. When this calcium hydroxide dissociates, strong base, gonna dissociate, right? It's gonna have one more of Ca2 plus, plus two moles of OH minus, okay? So what we can do here then is we can say, um, therefore, the concentration of OH minus, once it dissociates, is gonna be this value right here times two. Okay, simple as that. So that's gonna give us a value of 0 0.0262, and that's mole per decimeter cubed, because it's a concentration. So just like I said earlier, what you now we've done, we've got this out of the way, we've got the die basic thing out of the way. We can go back to what we would normally do, whereby we make this the subject, plug it into your pH expression, happy days. So let's do that right now. If we make the, let's go to a nice blue, let's go to a nice blue. So if we make the H plus the subject, it's going to equal KW divided by OH minus. Okay. Let's square bracket that up. 
And then that is simply going to be our kW value, 2.93 times 10 to the minus 15, divided by the OH minus concentration that we just calculated, 0 0.0262. Okay. Plug that in your calculator, and you're going to get an answer of 1.118 times 10 to the minus 13. Okay. Now we're at the last stage. The pH expression equals minus log our H plus concentration which is 1.118 times 10 to the minus 13. And that is going to equal to two decimal places, 12.95. And that's our final answer, guys. Three nice marks. The only real difficult thing here that a lot of students struggle with in the examiner's report is that it's diabasic. It's group two. Okay, so once it dissociates, you're going to have a one to two mole ratio. So you have to multiply by two. Okay, just keep that in mind. So that's the end of the video, guys. I hope it helped you out with some theory behind water, KW expressions, strong base calculations, etc. If you did find it helpful and you want to see more question breakdowns, as I said, like the video and subscribe and all that stuff it really helps the channel grow. Best of luck with your revision and our coming exams, guys. Until next time, peace.